Greedy. I'm Nanny, and I'm cooking this morning because I love to cook. I'm coming to you from the cabin today. Uh, we're spending several days down at the cabin, and we just love it. It's like you step back in a different world. Our cabin, it was originally a log cabin built in the 1930s. Uh, they raised two children in a room about 10 by 12, and we were able to learn who the original owners was from this cabin. We like to come down here and just take it easy and enjoy nature. Last night we had several deer in the backyard and we have all kinds of birds and the sounds of the country and the neighbors are friendly and when they go by they'll hawk and they'll wave. We kept our little one-year-old granddaughter yesterday and she was out playing in the front yard with us and when a neighbor would go by in the car, boy, she just way went right on cue. We didn't have to tell her to do that. So we are down here all week getting ready for a family weekend, this Memorial Day weekend. All the family's gonna be here. Um, we, our son has a cabin just up the road and we have another small cabin here on our property and one of our granddaughters and her family live close here too. So we're all going to get together and go out on the lake or go shopping or just sit in the rocking chairs and drink iced tea. But today what I want to do is we're going to cut up the chicken and we're going to fry it. Now you can probably hear the sizzling over here. I've already got some chicken in the fryer cooking. And then, but first I want to show you how to cut up this chicken. And you know, some of you would say, ew, I don't want to cut up a chicken. But let me tell you people, from the year we've had in the past, we may have to do a lot of things that we are not used to doing. And uh, cutting up a chicken is not hard. And um, right here, I've got a whole chicken that we're going to cut up. And <clears throat> I want to show you this, the wrapper of this chicken. This happens to be a Springer chicken. That's the brand name, but there are other brands like Tyson. And this is a young whole chicken. And why I do these is because there's no hormones added, there's no antibiotics, and there's no animal byproducts fed to these chickens. Now, sure it's convenient to go to the grocery store and grab a bag of chicken breast or chicken legs, but you don't know where they come from. You don't know how old they are. But if, if you have your own chicken, you know a lot about it. Now, I like to get about a two and a half or a three pound chicken because we like small chickens at our house. The first thing you need to know with a whole chicken down inside the cavity, you'll find a bag of what's called giblets. And this is the neck and uh, the, the parts of the chicken that some people don't care for. Now, I have a bowl here that I'm gonna put some of these parts in because the bony parts of the chicken, I like to boil and make my own chicken broth. So that's what we're gonna do today. So now we have the cavity emptied out. We have our whole chicken that we can do a little chicken dance if you want to. And then we're going to start carving this chicken up. First thing we do, here are the wings. I hope you can see this okay. First thing, we're gonna cut these wings off. So you just pull it out straight, go in to where the joint would be, and cut that off. Very simple, right there. This is the flapper of the wing. We don't like to eat that. So I give it a whack and I put it in my items that are gonna go in my chicken broth. Now I do chicken just like my grandma and my mom always did. They, when they cut the chicken up, they put it in a bowl of cold water with salt in it. Now we don't use any fancy, fancy breadings or anything like that. It's just really simple. Okay, chicken has two wings, so we're gonna do the same procedure to the second one. Next, we're gonna go to the leg and the thigh. Again, if you pull that leg up, 
you'll see a spot where you can cut it and then bend it back to the, the bone of the thigh and you can just cut through that and there it is. There's your leg and there's your thigh. Now, there will be a streak of fat right down the leg that if you cut on that streak, you will cut these two pieces in two very quickly, okay? We're gonna do it again. Back to the uh, water that I put it in when it's, after I cut it up, it's just about, oh, about four cups of water with about two tablespoons of salt in it. And we wanna keep that in the refrigerator. You know, when you're working with chicken, you want to be very sanitary. Some people don't like the skin on their chicken. This is the thigh, and look how easy that skin comes off if you don't wanna cook the skin with it. Okay, we've got rid of the thighs, the legs, and the wings. Now we're gonna cut on the back side of the chicken, we're gonna cut down to what's called the breastbone. Now you wanna have a really good sharp knife to do this. Okay, this is the fat, or the, not the fatty, the bony pieces of the chicken that's left. I put these in my stock water to make my chicken stock. So now we have a good amount of items to go in our chicken stock. The only thing that's left is we have the white meat. Now, when I was a kid, um, when we had fried chicken, everyone had an assigned piece of chicken that they had to have. Uh, Mom always ate the rib, Dad always ate the back. Uh, my brother and my sister and I, we would uh, divide up the legs and the thighs and the wings were just anybody that wanted it. So some people will just cut the breast long ways and have two pieces. But we always did it this way. See how easy that is to cut? Now, this is called the wishbone. Hope you can see that. And after this piece was eaten, we would always fight over the wishbone because we would break it and supposedly the wish would come true. Now, I was always confused if it was the short piece or the long piece of the wishbone that made your wish come true, but it was always fun to do. And then the very last thing is we're gonna take this white meat and the breastbone, and this is called the keel bone. It's kind of a tough bone, so you want to give it a good whack and cut it. So now we have the two pieces. And see, in less than five minutes, we have this chicken cut up. Now I'm gonna go back over here to our chicken we have cooking and show you how we bread it. Like I said, this has been setting in cold, salted water. If you can do it overnight, that's really good too. Now the breading that I use is just flour and some of my household seasonings. And these household seasonings consist of two parts of salt, one part of pepper, and one part of garlic salt. And I make this up a bunch at a time so that I can have it on hand. Now, you can also add onion powder, you could add poultry seasoning, just however you like it. And then I put about three cups of flour in a, a bag that you can zip up. And put a piece of chicken or several pieces of chicken at a time. I'm gonna show you how I do this here. Turn this to the skillet so you can see it. There you go. Okay, this is our flour and our seasoning in here. I have put a piece of chicken. We just give it a good shake. Now, it's important to take the chicken right out of the water and then put it in the flour because this gives you a good coating. Now, see how this is coated? I'm just gonna shake off the excess and put it in there. Now, the rest of our chicken that we have cooked is about ready to come out. So, I like to put it in a drain or drain it or a paper towel. Here's the leg. Here's the thigh. 
And we're gonna let these bigger pieces cook a little bit longer, too. Or that's not a thigh, that's a wing. This is a thigh. So see, making fried chicken and cutting up a chicken is not hard to do. And you say, well, I don't like to eat things that are fried. Well, I could argue with you on that too. Of course, everything in limitation. But if you go to the grocery store and you buy uh, that already prepared chicken, you don't know what's in it. You don't know what additives or preservatives. You don't know how old it is. But if you can get a fresh chicken and cut it up and cook it yourself, you will be a lot better off. So I hope this helped you and I'd sure love to hear from you. I'd like to know how your family does fried chicken. Do you assign the pieces? Do you bread it in flour? Do you dip it in egg and milk? You know, you can make this as difficult as you want or as simple as you want. So I hope y'all have a good day. I'm gonna pour me a cup of coffee and go sit in a rocking chair and listen to the birds. Have a good day, bye-bye.